good to turn the camera on and realise that you don't look as much like Wurzel or Gummidge as you thought you did. Good morning and welcome to what is essentially a follow me fontaine. Whether I call it that is a different matter, but welcome to our first ever double show day at Les Miserables, the staged concert. So for those of you that don't know, I have been cast as fontaine in the staged concert version of Les Miserables, which is on at the Gilgood in London. So Les Mis used to be at the Queen's. The Queen's is next door to the Gilgood and it's now being refurbished. So Les Mis has moved next door for a little concert version. I say little, it's spectacular. And it's been open for a week now, a week today. And we're doing the staged concert version for 16 weeks. And the Queen's is also now called the Sondime. So it's not the Queen's anymore which is very strange for everyone who is used to calling it the Queen's. Once the Sondheim is refurbished, Lamers will move back in and recommence actual performances and not the concert version performances. So, as I said, today is our first double show day. I am up way earlier than I would be on a normal double show day. It's currently three minutes past nine, but I'm still on sort of rehearsal tech time. Rehearsals start at 10 o'clock in the morning and finish at six, and usually tech starts at one and finishes about 10 in the evening. So I'm still kind of more on the rehearsal side than I am on the show side. So I thought I'd just head into work. The great thing about having a dressing room in the center of London is that it's always open from like nine o'clock in the morning to half 11 at night. And it's like a bedroom in the center of London, essentially. It's got all my makeup, there are showers, there are toilets, there's a kettle, there's Wi-Fi, there's a fridge. It's kind of ideal. So I'm just gonna head there and that is where I'm gonna put the rest of my makeup on, have a little, maybe, maybe a little like Saturday skincare routine in the morning because I've got an abundance of skincare products at the, uh, the Gilgood. And I'm gonna bring you along for the ride. Two shows, woo woo. I'm super, super early to London. I've walked down. Haymarket. Is it open? Yeah, it's open. Oh, I got really scared then it wasn't open. Of course it's open. Uh, I've come to Olenstein. I haven't had breakfast yet and it's half ten and I want poached eggs and avocado on toast. So I'm doing it. Ah, building work. Usually I walk the back way around like the side streets and stuff because Shaftesbury Avenue is so busy and currently really noisy um, but seeing as it's like half ten in the morning I thought I'd come down Shaftesbury Avenue and show you the front of the theatre because at the moment the Gilgood and the Sundime both look like Les Mis. <laughs> so it looks like Les Mis is on twice in the West End. There we go, here's our Les Mis. Les Mis the staged concert but then over there is uh, normal Les Mis at the Sundime. So if you come along here, we have Alfie Beau as Jean Valjean, Michael Ball as Javert, me as Fontaine, and Matt Lucas as Thenardier. Although this is the old dress. I do not wear this dress anymore. It got changed. And then we have the glorious Shan and Lily as Cosette and Eponine. The brilliant and hilarious Katie Seacombe as Madame Thenardier. John Owen Jones as Jean Valjean on certain nights of the week. And then Rob and Bradley as Marius and Andras. They are marvellous. Hi, it's Tish, you're right. Yeah, good, how are you? I'm good. Oh, I've got some post. Yeah. That's exciting. See you in a bit. One floor from stage door. No one is in. And then in my room, we've got Shan, me, Lily and Katie. We're in dressing room number nine. in. So this is my dressing room space. I feel a bit more human now, by the way. You can hear mic check going on on stage from the sound department. Um, I feel a bit more human now. I've had some brunch and I've got a cup of tea on the go. I watched a bit of Glee as well because I'm making my way through the seasons that I haven't seen. I mean, I started watching it from the beginning, but now I'm into seasons that I haven't seen before. But this is my little dressing room space. I'm going to be honest, I haven't tied it up for you. 
but this is like skincare corner over here. I've got um, lots of Neil's Yard products that they very kindly gifted. I bought this one in Waitrose. I've got some Pixie, some Super Facialist. I bought these in Boots. Um, my favourite thing at the moment is this. I bought this in Boots as well. Um, I have a diffuser that I used to use in my Heather's dressing room, but it is currently in... Uh, a box somewhere in amongst all of my other house stuff because my house is being renovated at the moment so everything is in boxes in storage. So I thought I'd get another one just because it's nice to have one for home and one for a dressing room. Um, so I got this one in boots, it was £35 and it came with this. I was given this by the wig department because I do have a wig but it starts about here and it's sort of like extensions, it's like a mini wig essentially i will show you a bit later on but the front of my hair is used and when fontaine's hair gets cut off the wig gets taken off and so my own hair is on show and there's a lot of pinning up there's a lot of like pulling wigs off very quickly um so the wig department very kindly surprised me with a big pot of this um just to make sure that my hair is being well looked after and then my trusty karma cream which is just for my personal everyday use because it's my fave. Um, this is my little opening night card from Oliver. He sent me a big bunch of flowers and this came this came with it. And Shan who sits next to me who plays Eponine, she's amazing and she got me this. She surprised me with it the other day, bless her heart, she's so cute. And I brought my coffee machine in from home. I was gonna buy a new one for the dressing room but then I thought if I just bring in my old one and then when my house is finished I'll get a nice new one for my house. This one is a couple years old now and the milk steamer doesn't quite work as you would hope. Um, but you give it a couple of presses and it's great, it's fine. I have used it to within an inch of its life and the cast seem to be enjoying it as well. I went to Nespresso, there's a shop on um, Peterly Circus and I went and bought a bunch of the pods. And I got a bunch of the recycling bags as well so that you can recycle the pods because you fill up the bag and once it's full you then take it back to the shop and they recycle them for you um, because the pods are too small to be recycled in like normal recycling so they have a special way of doing it apparently. I still have 45 minutes <laughs> until I have to be here until our call for warm up. Um, so I got a couple of letters on my way in so I'm just gonna reply to those i've got some signed photos and there's a harry potter shop called the house of mina lima around the corner mina lima are the um like prop designing company um who did all of the props for harry potter and it's around the corner from the cursed child so i popped in the other day and they were selling these postcard packs for a fiver and they're really gorgeous and i couldn't resist so i got a packet of those to reply to letters <laughs> I am happy, I am healthy, I am loved, I am successful. I am happy, I am healthy, I am loved, I am successful. One more. I am happy, I am healthy, I am loved, I am successful. Go forth and smash it. The little Britney mic is on. This is my little, my wig. It starts there. All this front bit is me and the back bit is not and so when Fontaine gets her hair cut this comes off. Heading below stage which takes me up the centre steps and if I'm right all the convicts should still be here. Here they are. Oh, I was gonna draw. Hey. So I watch the boys go on, I wish them good luck and then I come to this little corridor where I can still hear the show but I come and have a little panic sing through all of my lyrics. I also should have gone for a safety wee, I kind of need a wee, but I die in about half an hour, so not that long to wait, really, relatively. She's about to go on and die. And there we have it, I am dead. And I now go and sit in my dressing room for an hour and 40 minutes. In normal circumstances, if this was like the show version, Fontaine would now go upstairs and get changed into um like either an urchin or a barricade lady and she would join the ensemble and be in like do you hear the people sing and one day more until she had to get changed and go into her spirit stuff at the end of the show but because this is a concert version where we don't need the extra bodies on stage they don't need me <sighs> look i really need a wee because i forgot to go for my safety wee before the show today so that's what i'm gonna do back in a second the only point in the show where i'm on my own in the dressing room because Madame T, Eponine and Cosette are all in Paris, which is just starting now. 
um, but then they all pretty much come back up after that. So, got about five minutes on my own. Earl Carpenter, who plays the Matabois, um, he has about the same amount of the show off as I do, so he's literally in the next room. So every now and again I pop in and say hello to him. second show in between shows. I had a salad, I popped outside for a little bit to see everyone. I had a crepe, a plant-based crepe from Yoweka on Wardle Street. And now you're into show two. Here we go. Do you hear the people say? And there we go. Dead for a second time today. Because 100% of my show is like 20% of the show as a whole, if I screw something up, I've screwed up a higher percentage of my show. It's like if I screw up like one line, that one line was like 10% of the show. So, oh my God, look who it is. It's Rob Houchen. <laughs> We're back together again, together at last. Together, together forever. at last. <laughs> Oh god. Oh my god, what's going on? Uh, with well, the you love your buggy. Love your buggy. This is Jules. Hi! How are you doing? Jules, what are you doing in the show? Well, I crawl on my hands and knees up the stairs you do. like a little ninja. With your hood up. It's the first time I've ever tried to be small. <laughs> and I try and hide myself from the crowds and hopefully succeed. You're very good at it. Thanks, Carrie. Is that, have you got Marion in your hand? I've got Marion. This is Marion. Would you like to see Marion? There She's you go, beautiful. there she is. She looks a little, little like an octopus when you hold her up like that. But, squid. yeah, a little squid. Squid Marion. Squid Marion. There we go. She's beautiful. Thanks. Thanks, Jules. Aww. Thanks. Love it. Love ya. <laughs> Love ya. When I was Veronica, I was on stage for like 100% of the show. So 100% of my show was 100% of the show. So if I screwed up one line, it was like 0.2% of my entire show. So I could like live with the fact that 99.8% of the show was okay. It still bugged me, but in this case, because 100% of my show is so much smaller, if I screw up one line, it's a bigger percentage that I've screwed up. So I like focus, like focus like I've never focused <laughs> before, just to make sure that every tiny detail and every tiny line and word and my diction and just everything and so then if I screw something up it's awful because then I've got to wait so long to get back on stage before I can like rectify it or I've got to wait so long until the next time I do that bit so basically it feels just as exhausting as if I was on stage the entire time it's really weird really weird halfway through the wedding which is around the time that I head downstairs. It's really weird the way the wings work because it's like underneath the stage and the tiered seating even though it's technically backstage. Let me show you. That's the orchestra up there. But down here. Hello, how are we looking? Give me your best. Uh, oh yeah. Yeah, great. There we go then. This is the sound team. They're great. <laughs> <laughs>